Good morning! It's Saturday the 25th of October 2014. Here I am tanned and back from my holiday. I, I thought I might be a bit naughty uh, just before I came on the day and turn up the colour that you see even further to make the town tan look even better than it is. But it, I am actually very, very brown after coming back from my holiday in Israel. I'll tell you all about it, even though you've seen the small videos... The short videos we were doing every day, I managed to actually upload a video every day. Let me tell you, that was no mean feat. Those of you that watch the short videos, you can find all those at uh, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. little daily video there. Uh, when I was in Israel, obviously, I, I record all these things on my little iPhone. OK, all the short videos are recorded on the iPhone. And then you set it to upload and, and up it goes. Now, from my home, the upload takes... Five, six minutes from a hotel in Israel. Let me tell you, a five or six minute video takes about five hours to send up on the hotel Wi-Fi. And occasionally it wouldn't work. You know, so you'd have this thing going. And what happens is it, 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 you know, it says upload 10 percent, 11 percent, 12 percent and so on it goes. And sometimes you get halfway through it and it will come up and say upload failed. And you have to do it all over again. It was actually exactly the same when uh, I was with my nephew in Florida back in January. Those short videos, only five minutes long, would literally take hours to send up. Now, you can send them up in, in sort of a lesser quality. But, you know, when, once, you, once you've started sending up high definition stuff, you know, you'd, you kind of don't want to go backwards again. Do you know what I mean? So I'd rather. So what I would do is come in from a trip during the day. Uh, we used to get back to the hotel about six o'clock. I'd start I'd, I'd quickly put the video together and start sending it up. Then I'd go out. Right. Then I'd come back maybe nine, ten o'clock. And then have a look. And if it was still going, that would be OK. Or if it said failed, I would have to start it again. But we actually managed to achieve it. So I, I don't know if you you actually realised how long it takes sometimes to send one of those videos up. Fortunately, you don't need to sit next to the phone while you're, you know, watching the thing. Come on. Come on. One percent. Ten minutes later, two percent. You know, you haven't got to sit next to the phone. You start it and you leave it. And we did. Uh, uh, I did actually manage to do that. Uh, nearly didn't get on this morning. Oh, you know, whenever I go on holiday and I come back again, there's always seems to be something wrong with the main computer. Now I've got two computers in this little studio. There's the main one, which I use. Uh, number one, the camera is plugged into this. OK, so the whole show really comes on this computer. The, the music that you hear before it. And if I may quote a message that's already flooded in this morning from one of our seven viewers. <laughs> is it seven million or seven? I'm not quite sure. I, I, I wonder sometimes, you know, maybe they can't fit the word million next to the seven. So is it seven million or seven or seven hundred? You know, I'll be happy with 70, but seven this morning. So good morning to all seven of you who are watching the show live. If you're watching a recording of the show, there's actually a lot more people watch the recording than watch the show live. So there we are. A bit like Dallas, I believe. But more on that later, more on Dallas later. Wendy has written in about the music this morning. Um, and uh, she says, good morning, Chris. I'm early listening to that naff music. Well, I'm hurt and horrified. It took me a long time to put that little sequence together. Now, Wendy, you have to be very careful playing live music on YouTube. And the reason for that is um, you can't use copywritten stuff. So to find little bits of music takes a long time. And that's why it's the same, uh, the same uh, sequence every week. I have a like a, a, a 30 minute, shall we say a tape? I've got a 30 minute tape, right? And it's the same one every week, Wendy. So, you know, if you miss the beginning of it, tune in next week. You get the warm up music at around about 25 past 11. 
And if you stick switch, switch on next week, perhaps you can make it a bit earlier next week, Wendy. I don't know. If you switch on next week at 25 past 11, you'll hear the whole of the warm-up music. And it is quite nice. It's not naff. Naff. And talking of Wendy, she's bought me a present and sent it in to one of my many places of work. Can you guess what it is? Now, let me see if I can just... I will just show you. Can you see that there? No, you can't see that, can you? I'm, I'm just going to show you a little bit. Oh, no, you can see, you'll can. you be able to see it, won't you? Oh, I can't. I, I'll just show you. Wendy has sent me the Barry Manilow 2015 calendar. Yeah, I love it. Who's been sleeping in my bed? Sleeping in my bed. In my bed, baby. I love it. So we have the new Barry Manilow calendar for 2015, which I will not open. Look, look, plastic still attached. I will not open it till January the 1st. Thank you very much. I love it. Thank you very much, Wendy. She bought me one last year as well. Isn't that kind? Isn't it? See, there are some kind people in the world. I wish I was one of them. <laughs> That will be going on my wall. But at the moment, we still have uh, a few days left of looking at the Barry Manilow, October 2014 picture of him, uh, in the mauve uh, purple type sparkly jacket, which is quite nice. Do you think I need sparkly jackets to do my show? Do I need to, to upgrade my, my, my television appearance? Do I? You know, I mean, I know some of the short videos I've just poured on the nearest... The nearest large T-shirt. I say large because... <sighs> Put weight on again. Yes. Since my... My... Um, my... 12... What, what did I... I got to 12 stone, didn't I? Well, it's now back at 12 and 3 quarters stone. But I'm not 13 and a half. And I've started eating rubbish. I don't know why. I don't know how that's happened. I have started eating rubbish, not just on the holiday. It was happening before that. Bags of crisps, chocolate biscuits. Indeed, yesterday was particularly bad. I don't know what happened yesterday, right? But I went swimming first thing in the... Uh, well, I say first thing. I went swimming in the morning and I came out of there and I felt so hungry, really, really hungry, as you often do after you've been swimming, right? Because I do 60 lengths in this pool. So I came out of there and, and I, I diverted so I could go past the newsagent that sells oh, cheese and onion pasties. So I had one of those. Then I went into Audi and I bought a big bag of Dorito, Dorito cheese nacho things, Dorito things. They're, I think they're own brand one which is just as exactly tastes exactly the same to me. So I had a bag of, uh, 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 and it was a l large bag, you know, family size. And I had half of those on the way home. Then I cooked my dinner, two veggie burgers and a thing of vegetables and a bread roll and a few chocolate biscuits. That was lunch. And I don't, I just seem to keep eating and eating and, and I don't know what happened yesterday. I don't think I was too bad on holiday. I had a few ice creams here and there. Um, and I, I did buy a, a large bag of crisps and a large bag of Doritos while I was on holiday. But that lasted the entire week. Both those bags did last the entire week. So um, I'm very disappointed to tell you that, you know, that I put on a bit of weight there. Anyway, uh, so, yes, this morning, um, the computer was running at the speed of a snail. I don't know why... Uh, well, I do know why. I did an update yesterday because I came in, you know, came in from holiday on Tuesday. I haven't really had the computer on much because, you know what? It was wonderful being away and not having a computer on. It really was. I've got my iPhone. I can do emails and Facebook messages. That's about it. Maybe a bit of news, but I'm not attached to it. I've come in here turned it on and it was running and it said it wanted to do an update so I did these updates and after the updates it started running at the speed of a snail I thought oh no and this was because I got up early this morning about 9.30 because I wanted to check everything was alright for the show today Um. so eventually I can't remember what I did in the end I I, I noticed the the email programme Outlook um, was also having trouble getting the emails and I don't know I'd done some things to it and and suddenly 
all these old emails appeared from going right back to 2008. And I, I don't know where they came from. This was on the main inbox. And I thought, I thought I'd deleted those ages ago. So I must have done something somewhere. Anyway, so I deleted all those old, I mean, thousands, must have been thousands of emails in there. I deleted all those. Probably deleted license numbers for various programs, but I wasn't going to go through all the blooming things all the time. So I deleted all those and it was still running slow. And I, anyway, after two restarts, it suddenly burst into life once again. And, and here we are. So, you know, and honestly, so you go on holiday and I felt completely stress free. And I think part of that is due to the fact that I didn't have a computer. You know, I'm up here every day typing and looking at things and news items and and little funny things and, and cat video cat videos on YouTube. Don't you love them? Cat videos on YouTube. What is it about cats? We love them. We love cats. Oh, I saw lots of little star seems to be a lot of um uh feral cats in Israel. Oh, poor little things looking in bins and things like that for something to eat. I just wanted to pick them all up and bring them home. Poor little cats in Israel, bless them. Oh, you can see a few of those on the short videos. You find those at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. Um, you may notice that the clock behind me today is reading the wrong time. It says 11.15 and it's 12.15, isn't it? Right? And the reason for that is that two weeks ago, I decided that it was time to put the clocks back. I, For some reason, I thought it was time to put the clock back. So I did the one in the office. And then I rang Ronnie, best mate Ronnie, who um, is away at the moment. And I said to him, you know, you've got to put the clock back. I said, OK, then. Then he rang back 10 minutes later and said, it's not this week. I said, well, it must be. I've just read it somewhere. He said, it's not. Have another look. So I looked again and sure enough, he was right. So I'd only adjusted that clock, but I didn't. I thought, oh, I can't be bothered to put it forward again now because it's not an easy thing to put that clock backward and forward. If, you, if you're just listening to the show, just to let you know, I sit in front of like a uh, like a like uh, an old fashioned type it's not an old-fashioned clock but it's a modern clock made in looking to look old-fashioned okay so i sit in front of that and it chimes it chimes every 15 minutes and you'll hear it go again in about a minute's time okay it'll chime the quarter of an hour but to adjust it you have to take the but you can't it's not just an open door at the front <laughs> you've got to take the thing off the wall remove this thing Pull the pendulum to one side, put your thumb in and twist it. Oh, it's a nightmare. So I thought, sod it, I'll leave it. I'll leave it because it, by tomorrow, of course, it will be telling the right time. Because, of course, it is tonight that here in the UK, we turn our clocks back one hour. We get an extra hour in bed. Hooray! 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 It's a Harley Harley day! Da 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 da! Harley Harley day! It's a Harley Harley day! Da 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 da! Oh, talking of singing, I've got a couple of birthdays to do! Hang on a minute, we've got to do these birthdays! First of all, the lovely Laura. Hello, Laura. Laura is one of my karaoke singers. For you, Laura! is celebrating her birthday tomorrow actually at the cherry tree where i do karaoke uh, tomorrow every sunday the cherry tree pub in east dulwich between 7 p.m and 11 p.m so uh, i hope to see you down there with your friends tomorrow to celebrate your birthday i will make it special laura's birthday tomorrow and still not looking old just like me you know, I am known as the Peter Pan of the YouTube world. I really am, boys and girls. I have never aged of us. Happy birthday, Laura. And also, it's Ronnie's boyfriend's birthday today. So... Little 
Andy, I think he's 26 years old tonight. And Andy, a big happy birthday. That's Ronnie's boyfriend. And let me ask you, Andy, when are you going to dump that tramp and go out with me? You know, you'd have a much, much better time with me, dear. Dump that tramp, best friend of mine, and go out with me. That's all I'm saying. You know, what's 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 20? What's what's a, what's a 25 year difference? You know, what is a 25 year difference? <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Um, OK, so that's the clock done. I've told you about the computer, but it's all working now. Let's do some messages. That's a rushing in as we speak this morning. Good morning to you all. Thank you for your messages. Good morning to Paul Edwards. Morning, Paul, says, good afternoon, Chris. Glad you enjoyed your holiday. Paul, it was fantastic. And did you get your YouTube thing sorted? I did try to um, uh, call you on Skype a few. I think we keep missing each other on Skype. Me and uh, 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 Paul and I are very, very busy people. We keep missing each other. Hope you're able to sort out your video thing, because Paul does a, a little uh, podcast as well, don't you, Paul? Good morning to Matt Martins, who's in Canada. Morning, Matt. Um, you're having a bit of trouble there at the moment, aren't you all? Uh, over in Canada, we we do get the news over here. Sorry to hear um, that. Well, I, I think it's the first time Canada's been pulled into all this uh, goings on now. So good morning, Matt, and thank you very much, Matt, to your little assistance that you gave me while I was on holiday. You sent me a little list of uh, places and things to uh, do and see. Thank you, Matt. Good morning to Rory. Morning, Rory, who says, welcome back, Chris. I'm sure Katie the cat was pleased to see you. She was. Did you see her in yesterday's video, Rory? I don't know. Do you actually see the little videos, Rory? There's one every day, you know, except Sunday. Monday to Friday, a little video. And Katie made an appearance at the end of yesterday's video. You can find that by going to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Actually, halfway down the page, there are two little video screens. On the left-hand side, you will see the latest Saturday video. OK, that stays on there for a week. And on the right hand side, you see the da the latest daily video. So Katie is actually on at the moment on that right hand video. If you want to have a little look at that later, she makes a brief appearance at the end of the show. Um, Rory says he enjoys the music intro. So there you are, Wendy. Oh, it must be you, dear. Naff music indeed. How dare you? I'm hurt. Hurt. She said, how did you create the music that goes with the photo intro? Uh, da, da, da. Oh, no, that's just that's just a piece of uh, music that I've had for years. I'm not actually sure where it came from. But no one's ever complained that it belongs to them or anything. So I continue using it. And none of the um, you know, when, uh, for example, you hold your phone up to what's that thing called? Skypam? Oh, what's it called? Shazam. That's it. You know, when you hold your phone up and and various computer things, no one seems to be able to recognize that music. So I've always used that music. Uh, all right. Um, the back of the clock is always behind time. Well, it is today. It is today. It will always slightly be behind time if you're watching the live show anyway, because of the time it takes for this show to. I think it's. A, I think it's maybe up to a minute sometimes from the moment I say something to when you hear it. I'm never quite sure how quickly. It, how, how quickly? Um, I think it changes depending on how big, how busy the internet is. And Rory did did indeed see Katie at the end of the video. So there we are. Uh, Wendy also says uh, she was chatting to her friend Amanda the other day. She's a bit of a ba basketball fan. Oh, I can't stand sport, dear. Oh, you know, it, uh, how boring is sport on the news, Wendy? You know, when they come on and they do well, because I'm, I'm a great fan of BBC News 24. I have it on almost every hour. And then it comes, and now we're going to have sports roundup. Oh, I start falling asleep. And then that bloke comes up with a beard and a really blue eyes. Do you know the one I mean? And does the sport. He's quite young, does the sports report. And I'm sorry, I start falling asleep. How boring is sports news? Football, cricket, tennis, swimming. It's all boring. And they start rabbiting on about who's won this. And, oh, I'm so bored. I hate sports news. Why do we have to have it on the telly, on the normal news? They've got their own channels. Eurosports, Sky Sports 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, HD and everything else. Why do we have to have sports news on the normal news? Get rid of it, dear. Who watches it? It's so boring. Uh... 
so boring watching the sports news. Anyway, Wendy carries on. Um, her friend's a bit of a basketball fan, and she sent me a picture of one of her favourite players. I said, look at the size of his hands. She said, you should see the size of their balls. I'm sorry, Wendy, I really don't think that's suitable for this time of morning, if you don't mind me saying so, my darling. I think that's really taken the whole tone of the show down this morning, hasn't it? Eh? <laughs> if you'd like to join in this morning, you can do so, boys and girls. Uh, there's an email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Please feel free to use that email address, uh, whether you're watching the live show or indeed watching a recording, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Dot co dot uk. If you're watching the show live and it's coming up to 25 past 12 on uh, Saturday, the 25th of October 2014, then you can also join in live either by Skype. My Skype username is, or one word, Chris Reardon. C H R I S R E A R D O N. That's my Skype username. Or by telephone. Phone in number 020. Eight one double three six three five eight. That's a local London number. O two O eight one double three six three five eight. Any of those methods will get you through to me. Okay. Uh, Rory says sport. I water ski. That's a favourite. I prefer water ski. Do you really water skiing? Or you, or you like water skiing? I prefer real news to sports news. Water skiing. You, do, you what? You actually do water skiing, or you just watch it? I'm not quite sure what you, what you, what you, what you do there, Rory. Let us know. Uh, Matt says, Chris, one question regarding your trip to Israel: Did any of the security forces give you any trouble as you were from another country? Answer: No, Matt, not at all. Before I went on holiday, as well you know, I had considered not going. And two reasons for that. Uh, number one was this whole Ebola crisis thing. And number two was the war situation. All of these stories, of course, come from the news and, and that. What also started swinging it were people, kind people, kind people, who um, were sending me Facebook messages and things like that saying, we don't think you should go or, you know, please make sure you're safe and all this business. Um, nice people who, who who were saying he's got that. That meant very well. And, and I started again. And then I thought, no, I'm, I'm going to go. Because I've got a friend who's from Israel. He's not there at the moment. Unfortunately, he wasn't there. I hoped he was going to be there um, and that we were going to meet up. But he wasn't there. He's, he's in um, uh, San Francisco or Los Angeles. One of those two he, is, he's, uh, he works in. And he said, Chris, go. Everything is fine. And I went. And let me tell you, I felt safer walking around the streets of Tel Aviv than I do in parts of London. And that is the absolute truth. I didn't feel um, under any worry or pressure or fear at all as I was in Tel Aviv. None whatsoever. And that's the truth. Coming through the airport at Israel... That was OK. No, no problem at all. Going home on the on Tuesday this week. So Tuesday I was at the airport. You had to go through quite a lot of security to get to the plane. Um, and th that was fine. You know, it wasn't a problem, but you needed extra time to do it. Now, fortunately, I had a, an express um pass because i fly in the business you get an express pass to go through some of the security things quicker right so there's your line of people in the uh, economy seats right and there's no line for anyone who goes in the business class or indeed the first class as well you, you don't get a queue and i'd gone through those i think i must have gone through about four or five 
different security areas in in Tel Aviv Airport to come back home. And each time you go through one, you get another sticker for your case. And they all want to look at your passport and all that. But that doesn't bother me, you know. They they are doing it for your own safety, so that's fine. No problem at all. I don't have a problem with that. Yes, it takes a bit longer. But I did hear some of the people who had st- stood in the in the normal seats, in the economy seats, and I know they were waiting to go through some of these security. It was taking an hour and a half to get through. So it is a long time and you need to be prepared for that. But unfortunately, in this sad world that we live in at the moment, you know, this is this is a necessity in certain parts of the world. You've got to do it. What would you rather be blown up on the plane? No, I'd rather stand in a queue for an hour and a half while the Israeli authorities are checking that no one's got bombs in their bags. And that that's the truth of it. Now, the only time I saw lots and lots of army stroke policemen was in Jerusalem, Matt. And this was... Um, just a minute. Is, is that a, sorry. And this... What's that there? Just a second. There we are. Sorry. Um, was on in Jerusalem. Now, in Jerusalem on Friday... Let me explain Jerusalem first. Jerusalem Old City is kind of split up into sections. There's the Armenian section. There's the Christian section. There's the Jewish section. And there's the Muslim section. Okay? And all these groups live together in Jerusalem. All right? Now, on Fridays, they have uh, the Muslim... Um, what do you call it? Service. Uh, prayers. Prayers. They had the Muslim prayers on Fridays. I think at 12 or 1 o'clock. One of those two. Okay. Now, on this particular day, because we were going to Jerusalem on the Friday, on the same day. So we've done a few little tours, went into the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, we went to see where uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary was. Uh, supposed to have been born we saw um, where um, uh, Joseph's carpentry uh, shop was I mean obviously it's not there now but the ruins and you see that like down like almost like a cave okay like a cave so I went to see that now after that um, this was outside old Jerusalem because it's old Jerusalem which is surrounded by a wall and it's beautiful it's all glistening because it's all made out of this light coloured rock. The whole city is made out of these light coloured rocks as, as stones. Sorry, stones. Uh, sa- sta- I think it's sandstone. I think it's called sandstone. So it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, and to get into it, we had to go through about five checkpoints. OK army people now what had happened apparently is that there had been trouble um on these prayer days right and the israeli authorities had decided that no males under the age of 50 were going to be allowed into the mosque um because they were frightened of trouble And the reason that was given to me was that the army, the Israelis, do not want to have to go into a mosque if there's trouble, because that would cause outcry. And you can understand that. You can under it would, wouldn't it? You know, if the Israeli people go into a mosque, there would be absolute pandemonium. So they they're trying to stop any possible trouble that they think there might be from getting that far so we had to go through about five different checkpoints and these were surrounded by police cars and army individuals and you know and and these these boys seem so young carrying around machine guns on one shoulder guns in a pocket and bullets but you know they're in the army so i suppose 
and and the reason was they they didn't want to take any chances. That's what our guide told us. So as young Arab boys, I say young, you know, under the age of 50, were coming, they were saying, no, I'm sorry, you can't go any further. So they still prayed, they, but they had to pray outside the mosque, so they would be praying in the streets. Right? Um, as we got to each checkpoint, the guide kind of waved at the security people and they would move the fence back and we would walk through. And we, we weren't the only group to be able to do this. There were lots and lots of groups uh, being taken on these journeys on, on Friday. And we would walk through and might look at the army people and they would just kind of nod to us as we went through. And then they'd close the gate again. So it did seem heavy handed. But on the other hand, how did I feel about it? Um, I felt completely safe, actually. It didn't bother me in the slightest because I knew they were there to protect or to, to stop any trouble having and, and to stop any trouble. You know, why would why why would why would a member of the Israeli army suddenly point a machine gun at me and start shooting? Well, I haven't done anything. So that's not going to happen, is it? I actually felt very, very safe. It didn't bother me at all. All these army people. But some of the boys look so young. Carrying these machine guns and things. Now, obviously, that whole situation, it does make old Jerusalem feel quite tense. I mean, it really does. It does feel quite tense. However, I was OK with it. I thought I wouldn't be, but I, I, I felt OK with it. We just did what the guide told us and, 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 and that was fine. It really was. So that's that was my experience on the security people. I think they're trying to do a job the best as they can. I didn't have a problem with it at all, Matt. So that's uh, that's that's the whole security thing. And really, that's the only time I think I saw her. Now and again in Tel Aviv, you see um, boys and girls walking around in their army stuff. Um, because, of course, they have to go in the army in that country, don't they? And they'd be going in, I don't know, restaurants and just walking around doing their shopping in their uniform. So that that's uh, my um, opinion of that there. Uh, Wendy says, I was crying laughing because she said it all in innocence. She meant basketballs. Well, we know. Oh, yes, of course, we know that. Now. We know that, Wendy. <laughs> basketballs, honestly. Oh, Roar is off already. He says, yes, I do water ski. That's fantastic. He's off to the Natural History Museum. Have a good show. What, you're leaving early today, Rory? Once again, I've been hurt. Hurt by people leaving the show early. Let's see if we've got any messages here to do while we're chatting away here. Um, ah, Marge is there leaving messages on Facebook. Uh, Marge... You obviously, you obviously haven't been with the show long, have you, Taya? Did you did you miss the bit where I've been talking about the clock and why the clock is slow? Ah, uh, you watch. Will you watch the beginning of the show later on, and that will give you the um uh, the reason for that, my darling. Okay. Oh Christ! And now she sends an email. You missed Facebook post. I said good morning. Skype is acting up. I haven't got you on Skype at all this morning, uh, Marge. If that's not working. Skype doesn't seem to be working for you, although I have got quite a few people up on Skype this morning. All right, my darling. Um, anyone want to ask me anything about Israel, then please feel free to do so. I'd love to hear what you thought, um, perhaps about the show here, uh, the little shows I did and what have you. Uh, let me see. Ah, yes. So I did uh, quite a few trips. I went to Nazareth. Nazareth, um, where I think that was where we saw Joseph's carpentry. I can't remember. I've seen, I've seen so much over the last week. You know, every day, I did, almost every day except two, five, I did five trips. And they weren't expensive at all. They were really good value trips. Um, ben, ben Garion, I think they were. Ben Garion tours or something like that. And the trips were the most expensive trip. 
was $150. Now, that was the one to the Dead Sea and also up a mountain, Mount um, Masada. And that included lunch and the entrance fees to the venues. Now, $150, right? So, to me, that would be about, about 90, maybe 100 pounds, okay? That was the most expensive one. There were other trips there that were like $85, $65, okay? And I, I thought they were really very reasonably priced, okay? And for that, you would be leaving your um, hotel at 7 o'clock in the morning, okay? The coach would come 7, 7.15, just after breakfast, the hotel provided breakfast every morning, uh, which was basically um, you got you had, there was cereal, there was tea, there was coffee, there was bread, there was toast, there was cheese, there were um, cold vegetables, uh, there was scrambled eggs. So plenty to choose from. It wasn't a hotel, however, with a kitchen as such. Um, they made all that there themselves. Oh, and a big bowl of fruit, which I, I had every day. Um, they made all this stuff themselves. But after breakfast, that was it. You know, there might be biscuits and perhaps pastries and croissants or a couple of cakes sometimes that was there. But you couldn't then order a meal at lunchtime or nighttime. You couldn't ring down and say, oh, could you bring a pizza up, please? I didn't have any of that. It was a small hotel, the Savoy. Have a look, have a look at it up on the Internet if you want. The Savoy Hotel in Tel Aviv. It's only a small hotel, one, two, three, four, about five or six stories high. Rooms were, uh, rooms were comfortable. Uh, I thought it was a bit small, but on the other hand, you know, when I took my nephew to Florida in January, we had a suite. You know, so there was there was you came and there was a hallway. There was his bedroom. There was a big kitchen, come living room, and then there was my bedroom. And each bedroom had its own little bathroom so coming from that and then going back into a single room with a double bed i thought oh it's a bit small but then you know you, i don't spend barely any time in the hotel room you know i was out on trips every day so no problem what do you want you want a bed a shower the shower was fantastic quite powerful and maybe a television which disappointingly didn't have bbc news 24 I had to watch. What was it? What There was only one English channel um, for the news. Fox News. Oh, God. I couldn't. That's dreadful. Have you ever watched Fox News? Any of the Americans? Fox News. Dreadful. They had one bloke on there. I think uh, his name was Shepperton or Shepherd or something. Shepherd? Shepperton? Christ, he's right up his own arse he is. Didn't like him at all. Really didn't take to him. Has anyone watched Fox News? What do you think of that? Let me know, okay? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I just want to check if there's any YouTube messages this morning because I often miss those. Um, there was... Oh, I don't know how to watch that. Oh, yes, there are. Just a second now. Okay, uh, let me say, I'm going to call you Rob, well, Rob, Rob Locks Dude Cool, yeah, Rob, Rob Locks Dude Cool, I'm going to call you, well, call in then, call in, call in, but not on the Hangouts, because I, I can't work that, I'm afraid. <laughs> there was a very, very nice um, Asian chap who sent us a, a message um, last week uh, telling me that I can do so much more with the, the whole YouTube thing that I don't do. I, I'm supposed to be able to bring calls in and take them out again on video and that. The trouble is it, it's not really good for me to do that because I record the whole show on the separate proper camera right in front of me, you see. And um, therefore, those calls were... If I record it with the YouTube stuff, it, the quality is just not good. Not good at all. Uh, good morning to Daniel in Camberley who's with us this morning. Morning, Daniel. Nice to see you this morning as well with us. Very nice to see you, sir. So that's that. Uh, Marge says, I commented on the clock when you first started the show. Oh, right. OK. So now you know. So, so you now you know what's going on with the clock. 
Now, where were we? <clears throat> oh, yes, I was talking to you about the hotel. Yep, so you couldn't call down for a meal or anything like that. But that was okay, because I went out um, every night for something to eat. I tended to eat in two places. Uh, there was a pizza place, massive pizza. <laughs> you know, sm what was it? It was personal, large or extra large. So I just thought the large would be medium. No, it wasn't. It was large. But I can't, I can't leave food. I'm sorry. I'm not one of those people who can leave food on the plate. I think it's it's naughty to do that. Really bad, leaving food on a plate. So I'd finish this whole pizza. And also a, a Mexican place, Mexi I think it was called Mexicana, where they did a, a small but very nice range of, <coughs> of um, vegetarian stuff. Uh, one was, I think they're bur burritos or something like that. And it's like a... It's like a like a wrap thing, and it's stuffed with chilled vegetables. Oh, that was lovely! <gasps> and it came with side chips, side potatoes as well. And I had um, another thing that was. It was like a, a pizza sandwich. I don't know what it was called. Like a very thin bread at the bottom, cheese and tomato stuff in the middle, and another bread thing on the top. And also those. Oh, what are they? They're crisp things, and you dip those into tomato spicy stuff. Are they Doritos? Not Doritos. But you know what I mean, don't you? It, those things. Really, really nice food. So they're the places I tended to eat most of the time. And I didn't think they were over expensive. Um, probably uh, 20, what was it, 100 and, I think I spent about 100 and, 140 shekels on dinner most nights, and that would be about 20 to 25 pounds. That's not bad, is it? Eh? That's all right for a night out. 20 to 25 pound for meals in these places. So very nice. I found a little, loads of little shops as well. You could buy some rolls and cheese and uh, milk. Um, uh, but the, the fridge, the fridge didn't seem to work very well in my room, I must say. Um, it, it was quite, quite warm. <laughs> it was quite warm in there. Never mind. Uh, Marge has gone now, so I'll just say goodbye. There we are. Bye. There we are. Say goodbye to Marge. Um, okay. Uh, Daniel says, you look very well. The holiday did you good. Really enjoyed your holiday videos. Glad you enjoyed the mat, uh, uh, Daniel. It was a pleasure doing them. Have you only just joined us this morning? Why is that then? Very disappointed that you're late again, Daniel. You missed half the show again. Rory says, I haven't left yet. See you at karaoke next week. Oh, fantastic. Are you coming next next Sunday? That's fantastic news, Rory. I will make you feel welcome. Uh, by the way, uh, very easy. It's only, I think, I think it's very easy for um, wheelchairs to get in there. So you'll be fine in there, Rory. Okay. Um, so I went to Nazareth. Um... Went in this little gift shop there and had a little look around there. That's quite busy, Nazareth. Not as you would expect. Now, I know you've got, you've got an image in your brain, especially if you know the, the nativity that all the schools put on at Christmas time, don't you? Um, Nazareth is not a little, sta a little stable with a donkey and a horse and some cows. It's not like that at all, I'm afraid. It's, it's quite a busy town. You might be disappointed. I just took it for what it was. You know, it's not 2,000 years ago, is it? But you can go to these places and see it. Matt says, when you were in the holy places, did you feel a very strong presence of God? They, they felt very holy places. In particular... In particular, the very last church that I visited on Monday. Now, that was where there was, as you came in, what was it? Church of, oh gosh, I can't remember what it was called. There was, there's so much to remember. So much. But this was the place where Jesus' tomb were supposed to be and there was a long queue of people waiting to go down there I, I didn't go down there and it was also where the cross is supposed to be and you could go and where there's a hole in the ground which is supposed to be where the cross was 
and um, and there was a big stone there as well. Now, I can't remember, but the guy told me that it wasn't the stone that had been on Jesus' tomb or anything like that. But nevertheless, it was. I can't remember what it was now. There was a special stone. There were lots of um, ladies on there, actually. Um, and they, they were literally, they were praying on it and washing themselves with the water that was coming up and literally laying down on top of this stone. It felt very, very holy. It really did feel... That, oh, is the mirror bill... Just a minute, the mirror ball's not turning. Sorry. There it is, turning now. Thank you for pointing out. <laughs> I always know with Daniel, you know, if there's something wrong, he will find it. Thank you, Daniel. There we are, the mirror ball's turning now. <laughs> um, did, I, did I feel a presence of God... I don't think I don't think I could say that I did, but it felt very, very, very holy in there. That last church I went in, with that where the um, where the cave is and where, where the cross is supposed to have stood and where the tomb is supposed to be, that felt the most holy place I have ever been in. It really did some very very devout religious people in there as well so yes it, it, it did actually feel very holy in there all right um <clears throat> so that was Naz so done nazareth i walked around tel aviv a couple of days went into a synagogue i wanted to take some photos but it was the wrong day unfortunately um it was their uh, holy day so i wasn't allowed to take photos you must respect other people's religions uh jerusalem we went to a couple of times uh, went to the museum of the holocaust that was now where was that that was that's in jerusalem and a very powerful place they tell the story very very well there is an audio guide, and it's it's free to go in there. You, you, can, you can have an audio guide if you want to, but actually I don't think you need it. I didn't have one, and I just went and looked at the pictures and read the writings, which were in various different languages, including English. Um, and it told the story very well, from the first, what happened first, right the way through, until, of course, when uh, the Nazis... Were, try, were, were doing mass executions of the Jewish people. And I came out of there and immediately turned my camera on and, and was going to do a bit of talking, but I, 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 I could, just couldn't talk after coming out of that. There were particularly very sad bits in. And the actual museum you're not allowed to take for there were people taking photos but they said please don't take photos and i respect that it does annoy me when when people ask specifically please don't take photos and people are in there snapping away you know you've got to respect things if, if someone says that then then that's it you know if i was to go into um if i was to ever go into a mosque you know i would take my they take the shoes off there i would take my shoes off you must respect other people and how they are um, and in this museum, there, there was a couple of things that really got to me. They have big pictures. They have rooms where you can watch a film, you know, like a full-size screen. They have small video things with certain videos on constant. There's a couple of things which I can tell you about now, because I've calmed down a bit after coming out of there. One was this little video of an elderly lady who was telling us how, on this particular day, um, she heard a knock at the door, and her mum and dad had hurried her, I think her and her sister, or her on her own, I can't remember now, uh, up to a cupboard upstairs. And they'd been placed, pushed behind the coats and things that hung in this cupboard. They were Jewish, of course. And she could hear everything that was going on downstairs. 
that they were being told, you come with us, come with us. Is there anyone else in the house? No. And then apparently soldiers, SS soldiers or whatever they are, Nazi soldiers, went up and had a look for the house. They actually opened the cupboard door, but they, where they were hiding, they didn't see them. So they closed the cupboard door. And then they went back downstairs. OK, you come with us now. And the woman apparently said, can I just go upstairs and get my coat? And they allowed her to do this. So her mother came up the stairs opened and said quietly you must stay here don't come out of here mum and dad love you very much but we've got to go now we love you very much and they closed the cupboard door and, that, and she never saw them again isn't that just awful so that bit done me in really and also um another part of of the place and there were no signs there was no writing on the wall or anything like that as you were walking <clears throat> in the ground was this piece of glass and I thought oh what's in there so I went over and it was loads and loads of pairs of shoes it didn't need any writing just didn't need any writing and then it showed and then in another little cabinet were high, hanging um Pajamas like blue and white stripes, pajamas which people had worn, and there were tools that the Nazis used to measure things like people's noses and ears, which indicated to them whether they were, or not they could be Jewish. Because I suppose you know, you know, some people um, would might lie about whether they were Jewish or not. So they'd had these measuring tools. So, oh, you know, the ears are a certain, or the nose is a certain length, and all that. And it's just, just very, very moving to go in that museum. It really is. And uh, if you ever go to Israel, you must go. You absolutely must go to one of these museums. All right. Um, Daniel says it's a terrible part of history, never to be forgotten. Yes, it is. It just amazes me how some people come out. And and say it never happened. How could you? How could you say that? How stupid must you be to to actually think something like that? Let alone say it in public. Oh, fools, fools. Um, let's see. So that was Jerusalem, the Dead Sea. Fantastic Dead Sea. Float in the Dead Sea. It's great. The funny thing is, you float on your back and then you get up. It's quite hard to stand up. If you float on your front and then you try and stand up, it's really, really difficult. The sea will just not let you put your feet on the ground and you end up splashing around. You have to be very, very careful in the dead sea that you don't get um, salt in your eyes or anything like that because, you you, you know, you, you will suffer. You will absolutely suffer if, if you do that. <coughs> don't get salt in your eyes at all. OK, um, we went up Mount Masada or Mount Masada. I'm not quite sure where you is. I had to go in a cable car for that. I was a little bit scared, but we got in and went up the top there. Oh, that was really hot at the top. I think it was either King. I think it was King Herod's Herod's um, wasn't a castle, but he moved up there and had loads of slaves, 2000, 3000 slaves bringing up water because it never rains up there. So they brought all the water up there. And also they started growing things where you think, you know, it's the desert. Because this was in the middle of the Judean desert. It's the desert. How, how are they growing things? What he did was got all the slaves to bring earth up. And let me tell you, that is some walk. I think someone was saying, if you want to walk up the mountain, instead of take the cable car, it ta you know, get up at three o'clock in the morning and start walking. That's how long it takes. Cable car, four minutes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I went on the cable car. That was Saturday. Um, Sunday, I had another walk around Tel Aviv. I went to, to the uh, church, which was St. Michael's Catholic Church, which was about was about 45 minutes walk away from the hotel. And then suddenly on a Sunday morning, I found out that the hotel actually had two, three bicycles that anyone could use. You could book them out for like three hours. No charge. You just signed a bit of paper and off you went. They were all right. But the bikes never had brakes. There was no brakes on these bikes. Um, you pedalled forward and then to stop, 
you would slightly pedal backwards. It wouldn't stop the wheel, but somehow that seemed to apply a... I'm not quite sure where the brake was. It must have been in the hub in the back. There were no gears. And you kind of pushed the pedals backwards, and this brake would come on. Took a bit of getting used to, but yeah. I wish I'd discovered those bikes earlier. I would have got around a lot quicker than that. There was a lovely, lovely swimming pool, the Gordon Swimming Pool, which is at the front of the sea. So you've got the sea, <coughs> and then the swimming pool, and then a bit of road, and then all the hotels. And I never got to go in it, because I didn't discover that until, I think, Sunday. And I was going, I was going to go in it on Tuesday, but then in the end I didn't go on the Tuesday either because I was coming home. I decided to have a look at the shops instead, which was a bit of a waste of time. There's, to be honest, there's nothing really to buy in television. It's not like going to America where you can get loads and loads of stuff and it's really cheap. There's plenty of religious and touristy type stuff, but that's about all. There's, you know, so if you go to Tel Aviv, shopping, uh, I wouldn't bother. Go on the tours. The tours are very, very reasonable. As I said, you know, at the beginning of the show, to leave the hotel at six, at seven in the morning, you get back there. I never, we never got back till at six at night. It's a really good day, like 11 or 12 hours trip for like 60 or 70 quid. Really, really good. The tour guides, all fantastic. Let me see if I can remember what their name is. Ben. Ben. Tour guide uh, is well Ben Garan. Is it Ben Garan? Ben possibly Garan? Is it Ben Garan? Oh, I don't know. Here it is Benjamin Garan. Oh, no, hang on. No, that's not it. That's not it. I can't remember what they are now. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? But that, whoever it was, they were really, really good and highly recommended if you go to actually go on these these trips and uh, what have you. And uh, I think that's about it, really. That, that, that was my holiday. If you've got any other questions on it, then uh, do send them in and I'll, I'll answer them in the short videos as we go next week, OK? Chris at <coughs> unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, Daniel says, um, were you lonely on your own? <coughs> you need a partner to go on your holidays. Daniel, I've been on holidays with a few different people, including my best friend Ron. It doesn't, for me, work. I don't know why, but we always end up having some sort of big row. And I, I said to Ron, you know, this just doesn't work. It doesn't work for me to go on holidays with, with people. However, it did work very well with my nephew. I don't know why that is. Don't know why that is. OK, so if I went on holiday, I would ask my nephew if he wanted to come. But that would be it. I wouldn't go on holiday with anyone else. Just, I, it's not just one person. It's not just Ron. I had a, uh, another friend, Steve, I went on holiday with a couple of times. Oh, it's just murder. It's absolute murder. It just doesn't work. I don't know why it doesn't work, um, uh, Daniel. So actually, on holiday on my own, I had so much to do, Daniel, that no, I didn't feel lonely. And you talk to people when they're on the trips and that sort of thing as well. All right? Now, I did have a couple of funny stories to tell you today, <laughs> but I haven't got around to it. Ronnie, at the moment, he's on a holiday at the moment. He's gone to uh, Singapore and Borneo, so he's on a holiday at the moment. Um, oh, Shalom Tours, is that it? Well, it wasn't Shalom Tours. wasn't them, no. I think it began with the word Ben, B-E-N. I'll try and remember it and tell you at some point. I did have a, a, a couple of other stories to tell you. Um, fr yesterday was a bit of a disaster. Uh, maybe I'll tell you those in the short videos uh, next week. OK, gang? Now, just to let you know, uh, I'm doing... I don't know if anyone's around in the Surrey area. Surrey. But I'm doing a quiz just to try out on Monday this week at a pub called The, the Pembroke. 
P E M B R O K E, the Pembroke, which is in Causden in Surrey, Chipstead Valley Road, Causden in Surrey. So I'm trying out a quiz night there uh, on Monday. If anyone wants, to, if anyone's around in that area, seven thirty till ten thirty. That one, okay. Once again, quiz this Monday at the Pembroke in Causden in Surrey, seven thirty, eight thirty till ten thirty on this Monday. It's just a one-off and they're seeing, we're seeing if I like it, they're seeing if they like me and we'll see what happens there. All right. Uh, Daniel says, I know what you mean. We went with friends once turned into a nightmare. No, I, I wouldn't go on holiday with friends again. No. Even my best mate, if, you, if you're going to row with him, then there's, there's something wrong. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. If I'll go on holiday, I would take my nephew um, probably my other nephew and niece, I, I, I will take them as well. Uh, I always promise to take them to Disney Paris when the little children are old enough. So that's my niece and her family and my nephew and his family. And uh, when they're old enough, we'll go on a little trip to... I, I wouldn't be able to afford to take them all to Florida. But, you know, could probably, probably get them all to go to uh, Disney in France at some point. And I know that will be fine as well. That will, because it's a different thing. It's a family. Yeah, that's it, isn't it, actually? Yeah. So holidays with family, I think, work for me. Holidays with friends don't. Just one of those things, Danny. It is, it is a bit sad, really, isn't it? It is sad, really. Um, I just wanted to finish off by reading a couple of emails to you, boys and girls. Uh, first of all, March wrote in last week. Now, you remember the... Uh, the... Um... The bird I showed you in one of the short videos last week, it looked like a small pigeon, didn't know what it was. Marge writes in, it's a ring neck dove. My mother used to have a bunch of those, but found out she was allergic. I had to give them away. So that, that's what that bird was. Uh, Eloise wrote in during the week. <clears throat> and thank you very, very much for all your messages uh, throughout the week, uh, all on Facebook. Um, I, I can't really read all those out. There's just so many of them. Uh, but the emails uh, I've read out, I really do appreciate those. And the other thing, I couldn't read them out as I was going because I couldn't print anything off because <laughs> it was all on the road mobile phone. I'm not, I'm not very good memory to read, uh, memorise entire emails. Eloise wrote on the 16th of October, thank you for sharing your journeys with us. Chris Nazareth is much more modern than I had imagined. The churches built around Mary's home and Joseph's were amazing. And the Sea of Galilee was beautiful. Oh, it was very beautiful. Remember, the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea are, in fact, lakes. They are not seas, OK? They are lakes, big lakes. Can't believe you're tracing the history of what I learned about in Catholic schools many, many years ago. So jealous, I'm sure travelling there puts all you have learnt about in perspective. And that's from Le Eloise. Yes, it certainly did. You know, to learn about all this stuff at school and in church and everywhere else, and then you're suddenly there. Catholics will know, you know, the stations in the cross? Obviously, you go into a Catholic church and they've all got them round the walls, the stations of the cross. And then you go to Jerusalem and you stand in the actual places that the stations in your churches represent. Awesome. Absolutely amazing. And finally, Tom writes in. Now, Tom is at the moment on holiday in Scotland. And um, I think my next holiday is going to be in Scotland. I'm going to hire out a uh, cottage bungalow, something like that, you see. And Tom writes, hope everything is well with you. It's nice to hear a shout out from you on last week's show. I am indeed still out here and still listen to each and every one of your audio shows, although I have very little to add on the topics of Barry Manilow and Ronnie's various character faults. <laughs> I'm still doing my comics and mythology podcast, Radio Free Asgard. That's A-S-G-A-R-D if you want to look it up. Over at RadioFreeAsgard.com. Radio Free Asgard .com. almost every week so anybody who might be interested can check it out interestingly enough I will be back in the UK two weeks at the end of October so he's here now and I will be spending all my time in the Scottish Isles looking at seals, birds and nature that's great 
That's great. So unfortunately, I won't be anywhere near London. So that exclusive live interview I know you want to do with me in the Mirable Studios will have to wait until my next visit to the UK. Such is the life of an internationally known celebrity podcaster. But I know you understand being such a big celebrity yourself. <laughs> Please, dear. I hope your trip in Israel is a good one. And as always, take care of yourself from your devoted listener, uh, Tom Harris. Thank you very much for that, Tom. Nice to hear from you all. Uh, finally today, Daniel says, Scotland is amazing. You will love it. When you go going, don't know yet. Don't know yet, Daniel. I am waiting for that to happen. And Matthew Martin says that uh, he's off now. Hope you have a great week. Take care, Chris. So there we are. Uh, and that's all today, boys and girls. Thank you very much uh, for joining us on the show today. Uh, don't forget those daily videos. You can see uh, Monday to Friday at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk United Kingdom talk dot co dot uk Send in your emails Chris at United Kingdom talk dot co dot uk Have a nice Saturday. See you soon. Bye bye now. <laughs>